Hello everyone, and welcome to my bold and beautiful channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Steffi awoke in a cage. Luna confesses to murder. Ridge inquired of Brooke in Eric's office about Hope's thoughts. She first went after my son, then my son-in-law. What happens next? Ridge inquired, taking note of Taylor's distress. Finn marched in, claiming Taylor wasn't the only one furious. Steffi had fled town. Ridge blamed it on Hope, and Finn said she couldn't just kiss him. Brooke felt Steffi was furious with Hope. Finn explained that Steffi was also unhappy with him, and understandably so. Brooke said Finn hadn't encouraged Hope. Finn agreed, saying he hadn't seen it coming, and that Steffi had told him not to contact her. He admitted that not knowing where she was made him feel bad. Later on, Finn said that he had no choice but to tell Steffi because secrets destroyed relationships. He would not let that happen to them, but he wished he had not had to inform her. He regretted not listening to Steffi and avoiding hope. He blamed himself for always giving everyone the benefit of the doubt. Brooke assured him that hope did not go around kissing married men. Finn explained that hope kissed him because of whatever thoughts she had in her head. Brooke chose not to protect hope. Finn argued that he never gave Hope confusing signals, but he was left without his wife, wondering where she was and if she was okay. Brooke informed Finn that he was not to fault. He totally agreed, claiming that he hadn't initiated the kiss, but it had been the last straw for Steffi after everything that had transpired with Finn and Sheila. Finn stated that Sheila had lured him in, and Hope had experienced the same thing. He'd gotten caught up in Hope's tension and offered her a friendly shoulder. Brooke stated that was only Finn, but he replied that Hope had noticed something else. Finn added that Steffi had warned him to stay away, and had noted that Hope was becoming. Brooke interrupted, stating Hope was becoming more like her mother. Rich touched Brooke's hand. Finn said Steffi had warned him about both Hope and Sheila. He had no idea why he hadn't listened and instead put himself in situations that eroded his wife's trust in him. Ridge persuaded Finn to allow Steffi to take the time she needed away, but Finn disliked not being there for her when she needed him. He wasn't sure where Steffi was. Brooke inquired about the children's well-being. Finn claimed they were being looked after. Ridge recommended they speak with the kids if Steffi was gone for more than a few days. Finn, distraught, admitted that he had never intended for any of this to happen. He didn't want the kiss and would never reciprocate it. He adored his family and longed to bring Steffi home. He wanted to go back to where they had been before Sheila and Hope. Finn just wanted to know if Steffi was okay. Bill hung up the phone at his house, furious that Justin did not know anything about Poppy. Katie appeared, claiming to have heard that Bill no longer has a daughter. Assuming Luna had informed RJ, Bill was relieved Luna had him. To speak to, Bill had enjoyed having a daughter, and it wasn't just any daughter. It had been Luna. Katie assumed it had been difficult for Bill, but he was thinking about Luna, who had lost everything. Katie reasoned that Luna still owned RJ Forrester and Bill. Bill persisted on being there for Luna. No matter what happened, he couldn't accept that the poppy he knew had done the killings. Katie inquired as to whether Bill's use of the past tense to refer to poppy implied that poppy was no longer in his life. Bill responded that he had not made any decisions yet. He was still absorbing everything and taking it one day at a time. Katie assumed she should tell Will that he no longer had a sibling. Bill was disappointed that Will and Luna hadn't gotten to know each other because she could use brotherly support. Bill was shocked Luna had previously managed to cope with her life crumbling. Katie assumed it was owing to his assistance. Bill stated that he wanted to be there for Luna, especially if Poppy went to trial. Katie was certain it would happen. Bill said that Luna's house was his home. Katie believed Luna knew the situation couldn't last forever. Bill mentioned RJ and Katie claimed Luna had informed RJ. She wanted to be there to support Bill. Bill looked unsettled as he remembered Luna kissing him. Katie inquired if there was anything she could do for him. Bill claimed she was already doing that by demonstrating how much she cared. He praised her for her role as his guardian angel, among other things. She assured him that his family loved him, and that he was essential to his sons. And you? Bill inquired. Katie agreed and hugged him. Steffi slept in a cage within the condemned apartment and awoke to the sound of a drill. 
Luna secured the standing room cage door with a padlock. Steffi was groggy. She briefly observed Luna working on the cage before appearing to fall back asleep. The cage was eventually constructed. Steffi awoke again and spoke Luna's name. Steffi, still groggy, inquired as to what had happened. Luna paced silently. Steffi inquired as to the situation with the cage. Luna conceded it was unsightly for an apartment, but it was easy pickings from a building set to be demolished, no matter how difficult it had been to get it in there. Steffi experienced a terrible headache. Luna promised her that it will fade off. Steffi tried to piece together what had happened, and it became evident when she noticed Luna holding her empty tea glass. Steffi said that Luna had poisoned her. Steffi knocked on the bars, wanting to be released. Steffi claimed that she had come to confront Luna about kissing Bill. Luna claimed Steffi should have remained out of it, but Steffi responded that she would not walk away and allow Luna get away with it. Luna cried that her mother was imprisoned for double murder, and Bill was the only one who understood. Steffi said Luna should not kiss Bill. Luna informed Steffi that Bill was not her father, and that she and Bill were adults. Steffi mentioned that Bill was with Poppy. Luna knew that wouldn't be true after Poppy was convicted. Steffi knew Luna wanted this to happen so she could be with Bill. Steffi claimed Luna drugged Tom, Hollis, and her to get them out of the way. Steffi exclaimed that the men had died as a result of Luna's actions, and Luna would not get away with it. Luna explained that she had gotten away with it so far. She admitted that she had done it. She had murdered Hollis and her deadbeat father, Tom. And you aren't telling anyone, Luna declared. Steffi knocked on the bars and cried for rescue. Luna tells all to her prisoner. Liam entered Finn's office just as he was contemplating Steffi's departure. You and Hope. Really? Liam remarked, assuming Finn had really screwed up. Liam explained that Steffi had approached him at his father's home and asked him to keep Kelly. Finn assumed Liam was there to chastise him, but Liam, in shock about the kiss, simply wanted an explanation. Finn thanked Liam for being there for Kelly, but he did not believe he owed him an explanation. Liam thought he had a right to know what was going on in Kelly's life because it touched everyone. Finn explained that Hope kissed him, not the other way around. He didn't want to go into it with Liam, but he'd already told Hope that she placed him in a bad situation. Liam argued Hope wouldn't do it out of nowhere, but Finn claimed he had missed the signals. Liam suggested that Finn was the one who sent them. Liam stated Hope would not kiss Finn until she was certain he would be all right with it. Well, I wasn't, Finn explained. He also stated that, unlike Liam, he would always be entirely dedicated to Steffi, who was his top worry. Finn suggested Liam to speak to Hope. Liam stated he was about to, but warned Finn not to pretend he hadn't been involved. Finn stated that all he had done was support Steffi at a family celebration and he now had no idea where his wife was. Liam said that this was not the first time Steffi had needed to go, and he was concerned that Hope was all over the place. Liam said that Finn was in the middle of it, and that Steffi may benefit from taking a break. Finn declined to be judged by Liam. Liam inquired as to whether Finn was aware of the mayhem he was generating. Finn insisted that he loved his wife and had not betrayed her. He stated he told Hope not to do it again and went directly to his wife. Liam assumed Finn had guaranteed Steffi that it would never happen again, the same line he'd used regarding Sheila, and that was presumably why Steffi had left. Finn wished she hadn't because he couldn't stop thinking about her whereabouts. In the design office, Hope considered kissing Finn. Brooke arrived, assuming she didn't want to know what Hope was thinking. Hope claimed she'd had a rough day of being harangued over the kiss that everyone seemed to be aware of, including the recently hired Taylor. She stated it was difficult to get over her emotions while under the microscope. So you were thinking about Finn, Brooke said. Brooke said that Steffi had left town, not her marriage. Hope complained that Steffi would rather lecture her than fix her marriage, but Steffi should not go out of her way to punish Finn. Brooke advised Hope not to get involved, but Hope wanted to be there for Finn and remind him of how special he was. Even if Steffi didn't notice, Hope defended herself by claiming that she was Finn's friend, but Brooke stated that he was Steffi's husband first. Hope claimed she wouldn't pursue him. Brooke said to put him out of her thoughts. Hope, unable to do so, questioned why Steffi had the authority to decide what was right and wrong. Hope recalled that Steffi had committed certain blunders throughout her life. 
Hope inquired as to whether Steffi had the authority to decide which relationships and lines will survive or be cut. Hope said Steffi had gone after her earlier, but Steffi had also targeted her family. Finally, Steffi had stated that Hope would never be able to have a relationship with Finn. In the condemned building, Steffi pleaded Luna to let her go, but Luna felt that Steffi knew too much. Steffi yelled and beat on the cage, but to no purpose. Luna informed her that the building was vacant and everyone had left. Steffi claimed Luna would not get away with it, so she told her to let her go back to her children. Luna stated that Steffi would not go anywhere. Steffi accused Luna of allowing her mother to pay for her sins. Luna claimed Poppy had simply dragged her from place to place, using drugs and manhopping. Poppy had a one-night stand with a wannabe rock star. And that is my fate? That is my family? Is nobody going to be my father? No, Luna yelled. She believed she deserved more after living with all those losers. Steffi claimed Luna had targeted Bill. Luna said that she and Bill had a connection, and it will get stronger. Steffi claimed Bill was overly intelligent, while Luna countered that family was his weakness. When Poppy and Bill got close, Luna realized that the timing was right for Bill to be Luna's father. Luna had started badgering Poppy about it since she knew Poppy would want it to be true just as much as Luna did. Bill had desired it as well. Luna added that Bill required proof, and there was nothing he couldn't find on the dark web, including false paternity tests. A flashback showed Luna in front of the paternity test that Lee had completed. Luna said she terrified when her bitchy Aunt Lee arrived with the test. When it turned out to be the same kit as the phony one Luna had purchased, Luna was able to easily exchange. Luna had only ever received pity from Lee, but Lee had finally done something beneficial because no one would doubt Lee's results as a doctor. Luna claimed Bill had accepted her into his family and even offered to make her a Spencer. Steffi assumed Luna would be set for life. Luna stated that she would have money and someone who genuinely wanted to care for her. When Tom Starr appeared out of nowhere, she refused to lose her cool. She had to take drastic steps. Like murder, Steffi explained. Luna stated that she was not about to let Hollis or a former star spoil her future. Steffi responded that Luna had a future at Forrester and had been dating RJ. Luna thought of RJ. She described Bill as Forrester's charming, caring prince, but she also mentioned that he had an empire. Luna claimed that she had it made until her worthless father showed up. Steffi suspected Luna knew about Tom. Luna admitted that she had been surreptitiously reading Tom's letters for years. She never intended to let Tom claim her as his own. She'd been humiliated to see him working at I.L. Giardino, and she'd had to intervene before he could pursue her. A flashback depicted Luna opening a paper parcel and poisoning Tom's drink. Steffi inquired about Hollis. Luna claimed it was collateral damage, since he had meant to inform everyone about the messages in the rucksack. A flashback showed Hollis delivering her the letters and telling her that he had worked out who her father was, and it wasn't Bill Spencer. Luna thanked Hollis and said an employee was looking for him. Luna poisoned Hollis' drink while he was away investigating. Hollis returned, supposing she had been mistaken. He sipped from a bottle and instantly became dizzy. Luna handed him his drink, indicating that more might help. His vision faded and she assured him that no one would know Tom Starr was her father. Hollis gazed at his drink and collapsed behind the bar. Luna retrieved the bag and drink, then stood over Hollis as he died. Steffi revealed that Luna had allowed Hollis to die. Luna shrugged and said he should have remained out of it. Steffi claimed Luna would not get away with it. Luna responded that nothing would stop her, including Steffi. Steffi shrieked that Luna would not do a damn thing to her. As Luna exited the apartment, Steffi wailed and begged for aid. Steffi shouted alone. Kelly Monaco is out. Sam McCall exits GH by being killed off. General Hospital, JH. Spoilers indicate that substantial cast changes are on the way for the soap series, and viewers should brace themselves for a big exit. According to SoapoperaNews.net, actress Kelly Monaco is quitting her role as Sam McCall on the show after more than two decades. Even more intriguing than this piece of info, if that is even possible, a source in the post confirms that Kelly Monaco's character Sam McCall will be killed off. Fans might expect McCall slash Monaco to depart in the fall of 2024. According to the article, Kelly was blindsided when she learned of the show's intention to kill off her character. 
Kelly Monaco debuted on General Hospital as Sam McCall in October 2003. Before joining GH, she appeared on the Soap Sister show, Port Charles, as Olivia Livy Locke Morley and Tess Ramsey. Monaco has two daytime Emmy nominations for her work on soap operas. In 2003, she won an award for Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama Series for her part as Port Charles, and in 2006, she won an award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series for her performance as Sam McCall on General Hospital. Since 2020, soap veteran Lindsay Hartley has taken on the character of Sam on and off. Even as late as last week, Hartley appeared in one episode before Kelly Monaco returned to the role of Sam on Monday, August 26. General Hospital teasers suggest that all expectations for a Just Sam romantic reunion have been dashed, with Monaco's departure from the daytime drama and her character's death. Sam's romance with Jason Morgan, Steve Burton, was one of the most popular supercouples on GH and in daytime soaps. Luna's emotion was hidden as she was doing this second time when she saw Steffi's reflection in a mirror. That moment launched the hunt that followed. Uncertain Steffi would follow, Luna went back to her and her mother's apartment. When Wood's character did this, fans stopped in wonder as Steffi was endangering herself. Steffi Forrester Finnegan felt thirsty. Luna's offer of iced tea was interesting. Seeing the kiss spurred Steffi to pursue Luna to the apartment building set for demolition not knowing she was the killer. Steffi sensed Luna lacked equilibrium. The audience was led to assume Steffi drove to the encounter from her brother R.J. Forrester's, Joshua Hoffman, job as co-head of Forrester Creations. Los Angeles, California is July. Steffi left Bill's residence and trailed Luna by car. She wanted to drink something but had none with her. Luna grabbed that opportunity to dope her. The bold and the beautiful spoilers. Busy mansion of Bill Spencer. Following stopping to inform Liam Spencer, Scott Clifton, she was leaving, Steffi went back to Bill's house. Only a few specifics on John Finn Finnegan's, Tanner Novlin, suspected involvement were provided. Having left her phone on the table close to Bill's front entrance, she came back a little later. She didn't pick it up, though, as she heard Luna's odd conversation with Bill. Watching the kiss, Steffi ran away and trailed Luna out the front door, leaving the phone behind. If found that clue which drives the hunt for Steffi, almost surely will save her life.